Hello once again, TC Tie Killer here, and we have part three of my three-part series of my preseason top 25. Part one was uh, the 25 through 21st ranked teams with an additional five first out, so that means 26 through the 30 ranked teams. Part two was 11 through 20, and today we are going to finish that up and do my 10th ranked team down to the first ranked team. And so there shouldn't be that many surprises here. I'm kind of projecting later on into the season. And hopefully the AP poll and other polls will kind of converge with mine at the end. Uh, so if you have any objections with that, um, feel free to comment and tell me what you guys think is wrong. I'm sure there's going to be some discrepancies between people and ways of thinking. And definitely when I went over these and actually nailed down what I was going to talk about. I would definitely rank them a little bit differently, but it's a little bit too late and I'll change that later in the season or just wait till we see some games to actually base things off of. So let's get it started here. Michigan is going to be my 10th ranked team. They are AP poll ranked number 17. Brady Hoke back for his third year in the Big Ten. Dual threat Denard Robinson is gone and we can now see Brady Hoke's pro style offense ran with Devin Gardner under center. Michigan lost to South Carolina in Outback Bowl last year, 33 to 28. They are pretty thin at receiver. The smallest, the smaller wide receiver on the outside, uh, Jeremy Gallon and Drew Delelio. Um, they had 829 yards and 331 yards respectively. So, looking for a little bit more size and production from them this year at running back position. They have Saint. Fitzgerald, he's returning after he broke his leg against Iowa last year, and behind him there's no one really experienced or proven. Vincent Smith um, is gone, and the offensive line is pretty thin as well. Um, at the tackle position, Taylor, or besides the tackle, uh, which one of them is Taylor Lewan, he's a senior potential All-American. And they went on a big recruiting emphasis for their O-line. And it was one of the best O-line classes in the country last year for recruiting for Michigan. Last year's leading tackler tore his ACL in the spring. That was junior offensive linebacker Jake Ryan. So we most likely will not see him this fall. Uh, they're going to have to replace two starters in the secondary. And they get cornerback Blake Countess back from an ACL injury as well. So that will help. Pretty unexperienced team, but it's Michigan. Got some tradition there, and good recruiting classes never hurt a program. So that's my 10th ranked team. Michigan Wolverines, I'm going to say their matchup stick, or their measuring stick game, is going to be in week number two versus Notre Dame. Going on to number nine, I'm going to go with LSU. They are AP poll ranked number 12. Went 10 and 3 last year. It is Les Miles' ninth year at the school. And an amazing 11 players declared for the NFL draft early last year. Uh, four seniors gone, 15 players total not returning. They lost to Clemson in the Chick fil A Bowl 25 24. And I think they're dominating it most of the game, but just like a last-minute field goal um, gave them the defeat. New offensive coordinator Cam Cameron hopes to boost the offense's 374 yards per game. Uh, he comes from the Baltimore Ravens. He was fired about mid-season before their uh, championship run. Uh, lots of shifting on the O-line for the Tigers to make up for departed players, uh, such as left tackle... No, left tackle Lael, Lael? <laughs> Lael Collins uh, will be one of the uh, big big names there. And he could be end up on some All-American list at the end of the year as well. The top four wide receivers are back, led by Jarvis Landry. He had 537 yards for five touchdowns. And at the running back position, sophomore Jeremy Hill, 755 yards last year. Uh, he will be back lining up behind Zach Mettenberger. And Mettenberger uh, was only 58% passing last year, 2,609 yards, um, just above 200 yards per game. 
Um, he just needs to be more confident and step up. I didn't really see that many good things from him, but uh, Les Miles, I'm not going to doubt him. He knows that he knows him, and he's been at practice each and every day. Alfred Blue will now pay, be the backup after his knee injury made him miss 10 games last year. And on the defensive side, all four starting defensive linemen are gone. Um, but have some good experience in last year's backups and switching them around. The top returning tackler is Lyman Barrow, senior weak side linebacker with 104 tackles last year. The secondary is kind of like the defensive line. Um, just a lot of people gone but have backups with experience that need to be stepping up. They do have a tough schedule this year at Georgia, at Alabama. They have that Texas A&M game at home, Florida at home. Um, but... Uh, they they can get back to their talent level with many new starters at the helm and hopefully returning next year as well. So that's my number nine team, the LSU Tigers from Baton Rouge. And number eight, we have Louisville. Charlie Strong in his fourth year there, ninth in the AP poll, 11-2 last year. They ended the season with a win against Florida in the Sugar Bowl, 33-23. They have a couple high-talent transfers into the program, such as Michael Dyer uh, from Auburn at running back and Gerald Christian from Florida at tight end. They have a pretty weak schedule just being in the new American Athletic Conference. And they have one of the nation's most electric offenses at 31 points per game and 419 yards per game, led by Teddy Bridgewater. 3,718 yards, 27 touchdowns from the junior uh, out of Florida. Uh, he completed 68.5% of his passes last year and had two 400-yard-plus games. So big production out of Teddy Bridgewater trying to get on that Heisman campaign. Um, he was the Sugar Bowl MVP and the Big East Offensive Player of the Year. Um, they do lose, the, lose their leading rusher. Uh, it seemed to be pretty deep. They, like I said, had Michael Dyer uh, transfer there and be cleared to play for this season. He was there with Auburn when they got their national title. Um, but he is not the starter. Senior Ace Perry is the starter. He's coming back from a knee injury and had a 100-yard rushing in three games. 705 yards total last year and 11 touchdowns. The wide receivers are talented too here, um, but being thrown at by Teddy Bridgewater does not hurt at all, so that's definitely going to help them. Tennessee transfer Matt Milton is eligible 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 to play this year and Defonte Parker is back with team after a team high 744 yards last year on the defense they're pretty under the radar once again overlooked by that uh, amazing offense of Louisville uh, they do play in the Big East which is now the AAC um, so that kind of skews their stats a little bit but they're 23rd in the nation in total defense and 16th versus the pass uh, so that seems to bode very well for them. They only have one loss at cornerback. The rest is basically intact from last year, led by freshman All-American Keith Brown, 57 tackles. And they pretty much control their destiny to the third consecutive lead league title. So that's Louisville, number eight. And their measuring stick game is against Kentucky, and that's a rivalry game. But you get to compare them against the SEC teams a little bit. And going back to LSU, I went with their measuring stick game as at Georgia on September 28th, so near the end of this month. Next month, I guess. And number seven, I'm going with a little bit of a, this is probably my highest surprise team, Oklahoma State. And they are in the ninth year of the Mike Gundy era. They went 8-5 last year, a little bit disappointing, but I expect them to improve a little bit. They're ranked number 13th in the AP pool, so they're a little bit high on them too as well. Uh, they beat Purdue 58-14 in the heart of Dallas Bowl. Uh, lit them up. They're coming off their worst season in five years. Before that, nine wins was the worst year, um, with 2010-2011 eclipsing 11 wins. Um, they're just shy of a 10 win per season average. They have had some QB injuries and a pretty anemic defense that has hurt the team 
that has hurt the team last year. 46 points per game allowed and 547 yards per game allowed. So that is definitely something you do not want as a defense coordinator, as a, as a program looking to uh, win a conference. Westland transferred in the spring. And now there's still a QB battle between J.W. Walsh and Clint Shelf. All three of those guys started at least one game last year and uh, had a little bit of a, a quarterback by committee. Something you don't really see that well, see that much, especially between three guys. Um, senior Clint Shelf seems to be kind of the uh, preferred guy right now. 1,588 yards and 15 touchdowns last year, and he did start in the spring. Interesting offensive coordinator hire from Shippensburg State in Pennsylvania, Division II team. Um, but Mike Yurtsich, uh was the highest in total yards um, in his time there. At running back, they lose the Big 12 top rusher in 2012 in Joseph Randall. Replacing him is Jeremy Smith. He has 1,200 yards and 25 touchdowns in his career. On the outside, they have Tracy Moore Sr. leading, ready to step in. Um, he had a medical red shirt granted to him for last year. On the defense, secondary needs to improve 280 yards per game passing, and that um, is included with that... 547 yards total so the pass rush and the rushing defense need to step it up the d was middle of the pack in the big 12 in yards allowed and points against and they just need to get some more intensity and defensive personnel shifting should help them get more stops in 2013 leading to more wins and less points scored against and that will definitely help the offense as well putting less pressure on them so number seven i have oklahoma state and i'm gonna say their first game is their measuring stick game at mississippi state in sec territory against maybe not a top 40 top 50 opponent but uh someone we can measure them against the sec and just see how they are going to project for the rest of the year going on to number six is georgia bulldogs 12 and 2 last year uh ranked number fifth in the ap poll they beat nebraska in the capital one bowl 45 to 31 and they're five five ish yards short of beating alabama in the sec championship game one of the games i watched um that day and it was a crazy finish if you were watching it i think i only watched the second half but it was a good game back and forth and they're trying to reach their third straight sec championship game this year they have 10 starters returning on the offense including sec coaches number one quarterback pick aaron murray he's the all-time touchdown leader at georgia with 126 touchdowns he set the single season records last year at georgia with 300 3,893 yards and 36 touchdowns. And just in the Nebraska Bowl game, he had 427 yards. Behind him, he has Todd Gurley. He's going to return as one of the premier SEC running backs as a sophomore. 1,385 yards last year and 17 touchdowns. Wide receivers may be seen as a little bit shaky. Malcolm Mitchell, he leads the wide receivers um, with 572 yards last year. Um, he had surgery in the spring, and two other wide receivers also sat out in spring. So definitely going to hopefully hope to get them back, but uh, need other people to step up, maybe some impact freshmen as well. All, of, all five offensive linemen return, so that can only help them on the offensive side of the ball. They have a revamped defensive lineman. Only one starter comes back. They have to replace high draft pick Jarvis Jones at outside linebacker. Um, they have all SEC candidate Damian Swan returning. He had two interceptions just in the bowl game against Nebraska. He will be at the cornerback position. And lots of healthy competition with new roles and with uh, positions open. So that should make some healthy competition that should construct the defense nicely. They forced 37 fumbles last year. So... So that's pretty crazy. Only recovered 17 of them, but uh, if you get the ball loose, you have some opportunities. So that's number six, Georgia. And I'm going to go with South Carolina as their matchup game. That could determine 
who's going to represent the East in the SEC Championship game later on in the year. I was tempted to pick Clemson just because it's such a big game, but uh, I think Week 2 will be a big week for Georgia. Moving on to number 5 is South Carolina. And so big week in Week 2 for them. Georgia-South Carolina game could be two top five teams, uh, depending on where other teams fall and where other teams are ranked and just, just a whole bunch of stuff, how the teams look in week one south carolina beat michigan in the outback bowl last year 33 to 28 we all know that hit by jadavion Clowney uh, against vincent smith at michigan uh, jadavion is in the running as a heisman candidate as a defensive end he returns as the tackle leader with 54 and the sack leader with 13 he is projected to be the top pick in 2004 2014's nfl draft they have a number of injuries that held out a bunch of people in the spring. And at linebacker, they don't have a lot of depth. Um, the starters that are projected in week one only have seven tack only had seven tackles last year total. Three starters in the secondary make better continuity and helps the passing. Uh, defense and is a relative strength on the South Carolina defense as well. On the offensive side, Connor Shaw returns. Connor Shaw was one of the people that sat out the spring with a foot injury. And they have that little tandem duo right there with Connor Shaw and Dylan Thompson. Dylan Thompson, 300 plus yards in his two starts. Um, but Shaw had 1,956 yards last year with 17 touchdowns. And as we all know, Marcus Lattimore still out with his knee injury. Um, Connor Rush is a leading. Connor Shaw is a leading rusher with 435 yards on 131 attempts. Uh, the running back competition behind Lattimore is kind of kind of open. I'm not sure who has it right now. But no names pop up at me and have I've seen floating around. <laughs> Wide receiver is pretty weak as well. The Bruce Ellington, he had 600 yards last year, but he's the only one who had near as many yards from last year's receiving core. And there's a three-way dogfight in the East between South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, as has been the case the past few years. Who's going to come out on top? It's going to be uh, pretty important for them to win their round tables game, round table games between the three. And like Georgia, I'm picking that game to be their measuring stick game and kind of see who's going to be the front runner for the East. Uh, representative for the uh, SEC championship game. Number four, South Carolina, or number five, South Carolina. At number four, I have Oregon. 12 and one last year under Chip Kelly, but Chip Kelly departed to coach the Eagles in the NFL. Mark Helfrich comes up from offensive coordinator. He's an Oregon native, so hopefully, if he does good, he'll stick around for a little bit longer. How will they do post Kelly? Um. I think they are going to be doing pretty much the same. Mark Helfrich has already stated that they're going to be doing pretty much the same philosophy as uh, Chip Kelly did since he's the offensive coordinator. He knows how it, was, how it works. Uh, so I don't expect too much difference there. They beat Kansas State 35-17 in the Fiesta Bowl and have now appeared in four consecutive BCS Bowls. And in that span of the last four years, they have been 46-7. and So just a crazy, um, crazy crazy record over the past few years and they pretty much avoided some big sanctions they lost a couple scholarships and i think around probation uh, but no heavy hits for oregon uh, from the ncaa they're second in scoring in offense last year 49.6 points per game i think second only to louisiana tech who is now whose head coach is now the coach of cal so that could get interesting uh, star quarterback Marcus Mariota, redshirt sophomore, 2,677 yards last year, 32 touchdowns. And that's coming from a 35% passing philosophy. So 35% of the time they pass, 65% of the time they run. And he was still able to get those uh, statistics, which is pretty dang crazy. Uh, on the ground, he had 752 yards and five touchdowns. Heisman candidate DeAnthony Thomas is starting in the backfield. As far as I know, he return. He's going to be doing returning kicks as well and lining up in the slot from time to time. Byron Marshall, he was a backup last year behind uh, Kenyon Barner 
445 yards last year. Or no, that was... D'Anthony Thomas had 445 yards receiving last year, so he's going to definitely be able to do a whole bunch of things and act like a utility guy. Byron Marshall is a backup, like I said. And uh, Marcus has some good targets on the outside. Josh Huff returns and tight end Colt Layerla, who uh, kind of came out of nowhere last year, at least from my perspective. The line is strong and experienced. And on the defensive side, linebacker lost key starters in Dion Jordan. Uh, Michael Clay and Kiko Alonzo. Deion Jordan went pretty high in the draft. Uh, the defensive line is, is decent, could use some work, and will definitely uh, get a little work against Virginia and Tennessee early on in the season. Uh, the secondary becomes a strength. They don't lose any starters, where they had 26 interceptions last year, a nation high. And that includes Ifo Ekebre Olamu, <laughs> who had 16 pass breakups and four interceptions for Oregon. So they are my number four team going into 2013. And they don't really get challenged all too much unless you want to say the Tennessee game might be a little bit of a challenge. But I'm going to say their measuring stick game is at Washington and New Husky Stadium, trying to make it 10 wins against the Dogs in a row. And that game is on October 12th. Moving on to number three. We have Ohio State, and that is Urban Meyer's second year. They went 12-0 last year, but they had their one-year postseason ban. Um, so they weren't able to do anything with it. Not No Big Ten championship, no uh, national championship as well. Best team, They are the best team in a rising Big Ten from last year, led by Braxton Miller, returning for his junior season. He set a school record 3,310 total yards last year. 2,000 of which were passing and 1,200 were rushing and finished fifth in, fifth in the Heisman voting. They have a pretty good strength on the defensive line for returning starters um, as well. Uh, they get Brady Roby back, second team All-American at cornerback, 17 pass breakups, and they have a pretty good looking secondary uh, from what I've seen at the linebacker position. All Big Ten, Ryan Ryan Shazer uh, returns, anchoring the D. He's the only returner, and he has 115 tackles last year, so definitely going to need to be the leader of that squad. I guess I meant to say the strength on the offensive line, or the, the offensive line was the four returning starters, because on the defensive side, they lose all four starters, starters actually, and uh, so that's a big hit for them. And just to reiterate, there's a strength on the offensive line for starting for returning starters this coming year and Carlos Hyde will be at running back after getting his offseason charges dropped he had 970 yards last year and 16 touchdowns and they are pretty solid at the wideout position Corey Brown 669 yards and Devin Smith at 618 yards so that is Ohio State my third ranked team and they're going to be looking to go to that national title game. And I'm going to say their measuring stick game is at California. And California isn't really stiff competition, but it will be on the road to a team they almost lost to last year at the Horseshoe. So I'm looking forward to that game being a Pac-12 guy myself. Moving on to number two is the Stanford Cardinal. And they went 12-2 and last year and have been pretty amazing um, with David Shaw at the helm. Uh, three straight BCS Bulls. Uh, they beat Wisconsin last year in the Rose Bowl, 20 to 14. On the defense, they have nine starters return, returning on the fifth best rushing defense in the nation, first in the Pac-12 at 97 yards per game, and the 11th best scoring defense at 17 points per game. They led the nation in sacks per game, just over four per game. So opposing quarterbacks beware they lost all american chase thomas at linebacker but the front seven is still deep strong and quick uh, led by all american candidate trent murphy and shane scove trent murphy had 10 sacks last year the secondary is a little bit weaker but still pretty good they it centered around all pack 12 uh, free safety ed reynolds six interceptions last year and those six interceptions went for 301 yards, including three touchdowns. So half of the interceptions he had last year 
uh, he returned him back for a touchdown. On the offensive side of the ball, it looks to be a by-committee approach to replace Stefan Taylor at running back. It is led by Anthony Wilkerson and Tyler Gaffney. The tight end was one of their huge strengths last year, but both Zach Ertz and Levine Tolilo left early for the NFL, leaving them kind of kind of scratching for uh, pieces to put in at that spot. The wide receiver uh, position is a little bit weak as well, led by Ty Montgomery. He only had 213 yards last year, 19.4 yards per game. So they're definitely going to need someone to step up and fill in Someone to catch those balls from uh, quarterback Keith Hogan. That's not right. Kevin Hogan. <laughs> um, he's coming back as a sophomore. He's kind of Andrew Luck-like. Big, strong body. Um, he can stand in the pocket or roll out and throw whatever he needs to do. And he, he uh, got the starting role in the last six games over Josh Nunez. Um, had 1,996 1, yards. For Andy had a completion ratio of 71.7, so pretty high and would like to continue it. He didn't get a, a great chance to uh, show his skills last year, but will definitely be able to this year, hopefully playing the whole year and searching for that national title. And he's definitely going to have some help on the offensive line. Four starters return for them. And I would say the Oregon game is definitely the game of the year for them, but it's kind of late in the year, so I'm going to go with their measuring stick game as when Arizona State comes to visit in week four. They do have a bye week this week, and that's pretty much their only game that's really questionable in the first month. So I'm going to go with that one on the 21st of September. Now finally, as... As we all should probably expect, no surprise here at number one, Alabama, and they are ranked number one in the AP poll. Nick Saban returns for his seventh year, and they're seeking their third consecutive national title, their fourth in five years, which is unprecedented in the history of college football. They beat Notre Dame last year for the title, 42-14, to and they have a pretty ske favorable schedule this year. They got... Four actual road games. Their first road game is at Virginia Tech, but it's actually in Atlanta. So probably going to be more of a half-and-half half thing or even a home game for them. Um, they are at Texas A&M, which will be a tough game. At Kentucky, which won't be a tough game. At Mississippi State, which probably won't be a tough game. And at Auburn, which it's a rivalry game, but Auburn finished last in the SEC last year. So I don't see it being any trouble for them. Only see two real, real, real tough games, and that's the Texas A&M game and the LSU annual grudge match. A.J. McCarron seeks his third straight title. He's coming back with 2,933 yards last year and 30 touchdowns. Wide receiver for Amari Cooper. Um, he led the receiving core that's returning with 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns last year. He sat out some of, in the spring, um, but looks to be healthy and will be returning for uh, the opener against Virginia Tech. They're breaking in three new starters on the offensive line. They lose All-American Bar Barrett Jones. Uh, they lose Eddie Lacy to the NFL draft, but it's Alabama. They're always reloading at, uh, T at, um, <laughs> at running back. Um, so TJ Yellen fill, steps in and fills that starting role. He had 1,108 yards last year with 12 touchdowns behind Lacey. So just we'll, it's exciting to see what he will do as the starter. Um, on the defense, they led the nation in scoring defense and total defense. And there's no one without experience av available to replace uh, cornerback D. Milliner in the secondary. Uh, at the safety position, they're looking a little better. Clinton Dix returns at strong safety. He had five interceptions last year. And a junior takes over at uh, free safety, Landon Collins. Um, they On the defensive line, they lost two starters, but they're pretty experienced on the depth chart. They got a lot of people to uh, switch in last year and pick up some reps. And uh, at the linebacker position, all SEC CJ Mosley returns. He had 107 tackles last year. So their defense, again, like I said, just kind of reloading. And they look pretty good. And, of course, they're the team to beat. Three national titles, that is really just 
crazy to think about. And uh, who's going to be able to contend with them this year? Is it going to be Stanford? Is it going to be Ohio State? Maybe Louisville? I don't know. Um, it's going to be exciting to see. I'm excited for games to start on Thursday. Be on the watch for the uh, second half of my Pac-12 outlook predictions power rankings type video um that should come out within the next few days before games start on saturday so thanks for watching this hopefully if you guys watch the other ones thanks for taking the long amount of time that it took to actually watch these i know they're a little bit long but uh tell me what you guys think tell me where you would rank these guys and if i did an okay job and subscribe and follow and let's get to football season thank you